in YouTubers, uh, subscribers, new viewers. Thank you for watching. Uh, today, a uh, new vehicle, sort of, new vehicle to me. Uh, this is a Forte, a Trax Forte. Uh, stock body, that can't, I, I've stopped doing uh, unboxing videos because every unboxing video is the same. You get the vehicle, you get the transmitter, you get the tools to come with it, you get manuals. It's pretty much it. Sure, it's pretty cool to see what you're going to get if you're getting a new vehicle, but once it's been done so many times, if, say, I had a new vehicle that's new to the market, I would do an unboxing video, but this has been around for about 10 years. So there's really no point in me doing an unboxing video because there's so many others out there. So that allows me to focus my content on stuff that honestly means more to me and my channel. So uh, when I got this, it needed a new motor mount, it needed a one-way bearing. I took off the easy start. A lot of people don't think that taking off the easy start will help. It actually does because not only are you removing a quarter pound, which with a Fortec is 7% of the weight, uh, you're also lowering the center of gravity because with the way these sit, they actually sit up at the height of the cooling head, so you're lowering your center of gravity, better handling. It's gonna get better acceleration, uh, less drag, just overall better and I can understand why newbies like these uh, you don't have to keep pulling at the damn pull start but once you get it tuned pull this off and throw on a pull start they're only $14 I have a video on how to rebuild a pull start if something happens it's not hard don't buy a new one rebuild it that's what's great about RC stuff it's especially hobby grade you can rebuild it stuff from Walmart Every now and then it's fun to buy a new bright and just overpower the hell out of it with a brush the system and just see how long it'll last. Usually not longer than a day. But yeah, Nitro Portec uh, didn't come with these slicks. It actually came with these. So extra wheels and tires. I already had these. I had an Exceed Drift Star. Not all that great. Uh, a lot of play in the steering. I got it up to 102 mile an hour with a 7700 kV motor and a 3S battery and honestly that was stupid but especially with all the play in the steering but it actually did pretty good uh, the Fortec is a belt drive uh, basically a belt drive you have a central belt right here and then you have a shaft that goes over and to the center and then goes to the front diff then in the back connected to the uh, the spur shaft spur gear shaft there's another pulley uh, that uh, another smaller belt is connected to, which goes to the rear. Usually with uh, belt-driven cars, you'll have ball diffs. There are some with or with gear diffs like this. And then uh, one thing about the Fortec compared to other ones, a Fortec I will consider more of a on-road bashing vehicle. Now that you can really bash a on-road vehicle, but you can try to jump it, stuff like that. But then you get to like a RS4 II. You can see comparing these. This doesn't have a motor in it at the moment. I have a, uh, a Navarosi .12 for it, which I'll be putting this back together soon. But you can see how more simplistic the RS4 II is compared to the Fortec. This is much lighter, much more simplistic, uh, faster. It only has a one speed uh, set up, but I can easily put a uh, dual speed on it. That won't be that hard. Uh, I already have two of those. Uh, yeah, they're up there in the, my RS-42 box. I, yeah, I have a special box just for RS-42 parts. I have so many parts for so many different vehicles. And when I say so, I have so many different vehicles. I don't mean to brag. Having a lot of vehicles is actually somewhat of a pain in the butt pain in the butt. A couple reasons. One, you gotta find a place to put them all. Once you get in the fifth scale, they get really big. So, yeah, you gotta find a place to put them all. Right now, I'm in an 8 by 10 room. That's not a lot of room to put 38 cars, 37, 38 cars. Uh, five or six of them being fifth scale. So, yeah, not a lot of room. I'm, uh, claustrophobic. So, this isn't good. Uh, 
Uh, the radio I have connected to this right now is my IT4S. I have a video that I'm going to be doing comparing Spectrum to uh, Fly Sky. Uh, but I'm getting a Futaba. But I will say the one thing good about Fly Sky is the receivers are only uh, 750 if you get the GR3. The one bad thing about the, I, the Fly Skies is because of the reputation of the GT series and the GR3 receivers. And basically if I was to take two cars with the GR3E receivers on it and turn them both on, the transmitter doesn't actually bind to just one of them. It's bounced both of them, so both vehicles will react to the controls I'm inputting into the transmitter. So that was actually causing problems at track, so they have been banned. But with the new IT4 and IT4S and the uh, AFHDS 2 and 2A system, it actually binds to it like a Spectrum does, and Futaba and Airtronics. Basically, if I were to have a podium and I were to put all of them on a podium, I would put Futaba and Airtronics on first place, which Sam was, Airtronics. And then I would put Spectrum and then fly on two, second place. And then third would be Spectrum. Spectrum's decent stuff for the price. Very good stuff. I mean, $100 for a touchscreen and so many parts. But I've heard bad things about this. If you drop it, the dead point for the steering and the uh, throttle and brake gets bad. Uh, I've just I've heard some bad things about it. Screen can black out after so long. Thankfully, I got a warranty with mine, so if anything it goes bad, I send it back. They send me a new one, then I just got to set up all my cars again and all the switches on the transmitter. Uh, the pipe on this is a actually a Jado pipe. I have the stinger pointing down and inside so it actually looks like smoke is coming out from under the car so it looks like it's sort of burning the tires. It's running slicks on it. Uh, that's really it. I have a case and a head, a 3.3 case and head coming. So I am putting a 3.3 in this. I have all the other parts. I have back plates. It's just I've broken so many cases when I was going for uh, 100 miles an hour with a nitro with a rustler. Uh, honestly, I can't remember the gearing because that was about that was before I started my uh, channel. I wish I had got a long video, but then once I started watching YouTube, I figured okay, I'll start at first. Uh, I didn't, I knew a lot, but I wasn't experienced, so I was uh, amateur RC, then evolved amateur RC, and now main part of my channel is to get other people into Nitro. It's not that hard. Sure, there is a steep learning curve, but once you learn it, they're so damn fun. Seriously, they're fun, and you don't have to worry, you don't have to wait a long time for a battery to start. You just take your fuel. Fuel it up. As soon as it gets low, fuel it up. Just continue fueling it up. I use bone sprue. $30 for four quarts. Which is not that bad. Uh, four quarts is a gallon. That will get you easily, if you run daily, that will get you a, about a month. And it's $30. Uh, a lipo, cheap lipo you could get for 30 bucks. Uh, honestly, yeah, no. I would spend, I spend more money. I, I buy Venoms. They come with a uh, one year warranty. But with Bones Brew Fuel, I'm just going to go over it real quick. Uh, $30 a gallon, you get four quarts. Uh, the, a Traxxas Fuel, uh, I always forget the damn name of this part. The Fuel Spout, whatever the hell you want to call it. It just fits and screws on, which is a very cool, uh, very cool part of the bottle. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can order directly from them. $30 a gallon. Uh, 20, I don't know how much it is to ship one gallon, but for two gallons, it's 20 bucks. If you buy three gallons, no shipping. So 90 bucks for three gallons. How can you beat that? And it's very good fuel. Uh, it uses VP, racing, nitro, uh, nitromethane, and methanol, and then their own blend of synthetic and uh, crap, synthetic. Uh, the, the synthetic and castor oil and the castor oil is usually the stuff that turns a sort of a pinkish color 
So yeah, that's pretty much it about the Fortec. A uh, very simple car. It's been around for a very long time. Uh, even with a 2.5, you can look at getting 70, 75 mile an hour out of the box. It has a two speed. I have a vehicle right here, which I have been waiting for about three months to get. I got, I ordered a long time ago and it took a long time to get here. This is a Schumacher Menace GTR. Never been ran, had to break in the motor yesterday. Uh, it's got a .21, three speed tranny. Yeah, I'll be going over this uh, in a separate video, but it's, it's nice. There's no scratches on the bottom because I haven't ran it. It's too hot. Uh, I promise I will have more running videos coming, but honestly, right now around here, it's too hot. Right now, it's about uh, 98 degrees, and it's only 350. So, it's going to get worse. It's going to get hotter throughout the day. Uh, usually around 5, 30, 6 o'clock, it peaks around 100, 203, and then it starts dropping, and it gets hot in my house. Uh, I really need to re-insulate this house. Because it gets up to about 80 in here on some day, on really, really hot days. It'll get up to 80, and then thankfully our, uh, we're on budget billing for Georgia Power. So they, uh, usually we would have to pay about $400 for an electric bill. We only pay $133. But that's throughout the entire year. Even when our bill is less than $100, we still pay the $133. That's what budget billing does. To make up for the months the three or four months where you would have had to pay outrageous costs but really not really outrageous you're using up to 100 kilowatt hours in a day so back to the car the rc car uh this has 2056 servos from uh traxxas nah. all it is is 2055 servo that's waterproof it's not digital so yeah, uh, definitely putting Savox uh, 0251 Metal Gear servos in this. Uh, they're faster, they're better, they're Metal Gear. Uh, I'll be doing more to this. I eventually maybe like to put at least a .21 in it. Uh, the Menace compared to the Fortec. The Fortec, I don't, I, I don't really know yet. I haven't ran the Menace yet, but from people I've talked to that have had one in the past. Uh, the the menace is very fast it's got a three-speed transmission and it's got a 0.21 engine so it's it's quick and the Fortec is very quick but it's only got a two-speed so you have to weigh those things out so yeah that's pretty much it for the Fortec. uh let me i'm just like usual it has a completely uh the suspension can be uh completely adjustable you can set the camber, the caster, the toe. You can set the toe. You can set the toe on the rear, but you have to have the little uh, blocks, uh, the toe blocks for the rear. But usually, stocks fine for me unless I'm racing. Uh, there's not a lot of race on road racing in Georgia. Uh, I did just find out that uh, ta uh, 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 Hobby Town in Kennesaw, Georgia has this one day out of the year where they get out all their toys and have a big party. BBC Outdoors actually did that and looked pretty fun. I, uh, that's where I would used to go to race uh, up in that area. So, yeah, I, I'm actually sad that I missed out on that. Uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Fortec. Uh, that's, it's got CV uh, plastic drive shafts. Uh, I think this don't quote me, but I think the Slash is starting to use the XO1 style shafts just with a 4mm stub shaft compared to the 6mm stub shaft that comes on the XO1. The XO1 is a 1 7 scale vehicle, whereas the uh, tra the Slash is a 1 10 scale. A lot of people say you can move over to the 6mm stub shaft, just change your bearings. Personally, I would not do that because the larger the balls in your bearings, uh, the more the more abuse they can take, the more heat they can take. Uh, when you go with smaller bearings, uh, where it has a large inside diameter and a smaller outside diameter, you have the smaller balls. They can't take as much abuse. They heat up a lot faster. They just, they're not as good. That's why King Heads makes a motor mount for the Slash that uses a much bigger bearing because that's where all the power is going, the spur gears right there. 
So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is definitely going to get metal drive shafts. I'm not sure who I'm going to get them from yet. I'm at least going to put them in the back. It does have CV plastic drive shafts, so that's a plus. Especially when turning sharp. Although this can't do it that well with the servo that's on it. I don't like Traxxas servos. I don't like Traxxas electronics. I love their nitros. The 2.5 and the 3.3 has a crap connecting rod, but that can be replaced for $15 to $30. Not bad. Basically, the Trax connecting rod splits right down the middle. It never happened to me, but I've seen it many times. So, yeah, that's the Ford Tech. Uh, just gonna go over it one more time, make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh yeah, and the body that I'm running on this is this one. I drilled out all these, I still got to clean this up, but I drilled out all these holes for uh, airflow to go over the engine because that's how these stay cool. Uh, some people say, no, you don't have to have, to air, have airflow over the engine for it to stay cool. Uh, how's it going to stay cool then? Well, if you tune it right, yeah, then you have to run it rich. I like to run mine as, as lean as possible. I like to run right on the edge. So, I get the most power, but it doesn't overheat. <clears throat> but with this body, it actually looks pretty good. I think. I still gotta fix this side. It's sitting a little high. But yeah, with that body and with it sitting down and the suspension compressed a little, and the wheels are actually tucked up in the fenders a little. So, and right now it's up on the dirt track stand so I can spin it. Yee! I'm being a little juvenile today. So, yeah, that's the Traxxas Sport Tech. Got any questions, like usual, hit me down below. I will be doing more, uh, like I said, I'll, do, I'll be doing more uh, running videos, but as I said, it's so damn hot outside. I don't want to risk blowing up the engine. I mean, I know you can tune, but then I'll have to tune really rich. Not really rich, but richer than I'd like to, to keep the engine cool. I won't get the max power. So usually, when I do do a running video, it's uh, after 8 p.m. usually there's still some light out and enough for the camera to pick it up uh, I also have a video coming with my DVXL and now it's an 813 carb uh, Wow uh, it's gonna be getting a, uh, a booster a jet pro booster pipe the dominator pipe is a good pipe to get away from the cans but the it, it it really doesn't help with acceleration. It doesn't help with the low end. Although I'm running a 30.5 cc engine, I have a lot of low end, but I'm running a 23 tooth pinion to get uh, a high speed. So you put all those together, it sort of drones. There's a droning sound when you first take off. It doesn't climb an RPM quickly. So that's some things that you have to take into account when you get the Dominator pipe. But compared to, say, a Jet Pro Booster or a Samba or something like that, it just doesn't it doesn't do as good. But it, in the long run, uh, it has a better high-end uh, setup. So it all goes for what you want. Honestly, I like to have a lot of low end and be able to hit my top speed, which I usually aim for about 50 miles per hour. I can do that with the setup I have. But if the booster will give me more low end and the same top speed, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to buy one, see what happens. And if it's not all that good, I'll sell it. Whichever pipe I decide to get rid of, I'll be selling it. And they're in great condition because I don't run my fifth scales a lot. I don't have a lot of room, but I like to have them for when I do have room. So, like usual, Natural Revolution RC, thanks for watching. Uh, a lot more uh, going to be doing a, a more of an unveiling on the Schumacher Menace GTR. Uh, I'll be doing a comparison video between the Spectrum ID4S and a Spectrum DX4. Now you have the DX4S and the DX4R. DX4R has a couple features like being able to move the wheel down, uh, tilting it and stuff like that. Which this one you can sort of do with, you just can't move it down or move it to the other side. But for the price, this is great. And you can't beat the price of the receivers, especially if you're just a basher. So, thanks for watching. Peace.